Welcome to a quick demonstration of the prototype of an ATW800 slash 2 or second or half, whatever you like to call it. So what we have here is the model for the Atari Mega ST. Um, from top view, you can spot that there is a transputer tram installed and an FPGA, which is uh, currently the Nano 20K. Um, from the bottom, you spot the Mega ST bus connector, two flash EPROMs, and a coin battery to replace the one installed in the Mega ST case. On the side, there are options for an internal transputer link not populated USB loop through connector which goes to the back connectors which I show here so from the left we have external transputer links connector we have a dip switch so two switches for selecting one of four possible toss ROMs then this would be the place where we could found a connector for two USB A connectors which are looped through to this. Th the idea behind that is connecting a Lightning ST USB cable internally and have that going to the back of the system without the need of cutting your um, Atari case. Next to it, on top, obviously, there's the HDMI connector, HDMI connector from the Nano, and below that is a micro SD card connector, which is actually the same as the Nano provides tucked under here, which is very inconvenient to connect. So we routed the connection out here, which also will be available to the edge connector then. In the final version, we won't piggyback this, but it will be directly sitting on top of here. In this prototype version, we have a connector and an adapter because we started out with the Tang Nano 9K and later on switched to the physically smaller but internally bigger system, um, the 920K version. What else? Well, the Mega ST version has an external power connector because the Mega ST bus does not provide any voltages. Further down below, you see this is pr the provision for a VME connector for the Mega STE or the Atari TT. In that case, this won't be populated as well as the connectors at the sides because you need uh, the sides being free for pushing it into the cage which has a slat on the side. Back here, I forgot about that, this is the connector for the uh, real-time clock battery. So it goes in here using the cable which is already used in the Mega ST. Then finally, but still not not working yet. This is uh, the provision for the IDE interface, especially for for setting addresses. And this little one pin is here for the ACSI init uh, interrupt line, which is physically, when installed, right next to it. So the cable will be just a few centimeters inches long. So that's about the prototype. If we take a closer look, this is a Mark II, so we are of version 2, so we had quite some models already designed and are still working on it, but this is um, to give you an idea where we are currently. Next we will plug it into the system and see how it runs. Okay. Now let's see the ATW802 in action. So we have a standard Mega STE 4 in this case, 
I installed a GoTek instead of a, the standard floppy as well as a, a more modern power supply. But everything else is standard. We have a monitor connected on board to a VGA. So this shows TOS 104. And now we install the card in this more or less vanilla system. So powering it off, removing the original ROMs, plugging in the card, connecting the auxiliary power. That's all you need to do. So now the HDMI goes to the same display, but it has two inputs, so we can switch between them. Moving it to the screen. Everything's connected, so we power it on. And immediately we have Emotos coming booted from the card. The card boots. Oh, I forgot to switch the images so we need to do a restart so now we have floppy image with the drivers on it that switches over to the digital output so i'm switching the monitor so we know on digital hdmi now it loads the drivers we have a menu as you might know it from the nova card so you could set the resolution and stuff and you see in this case, we go from a monochrome 640 by 400 uh, way up to 1600 by 1200 in 8 bits, so that's 265 colors. In this case, we boot the more or less standard um, 1024 by 786 by 8 bits. We leave the menu and let it finish booting, and there's the desktop. For those of you who are interested in specs and numbers, we can now run the Gembench version 6. So let's start this from the floppy. And let's run all the display tests. There we are. So, as of today, we are at 235% versus the color resolution of a standard Mega ST. For this last demonstration, I switched the tram module to a size 1 and um, we will have a look at the co-working of the whole system. So for the first step, just to get a, a speed idea, we are running a, a Mandelbrot on the transputer itself and um, for the maximum speed we do that in monochrome just to get a first impression how fast it could be and it's still limited by the speed of the Mega ST bus. So that was uploading the binary into the transputer's RAM and now we start that and 
while it's just displaying a black and white Mandelbrot at 320 by 200 so that was that internally it calculates everything in 8-bit colors so just the host software running on the ST is sampling that down to black and white so that was pretty quick and now we do the same with gem and gem is uh, comparably slow in plotting so uh, let me switch to uh, color mode and then we see how that works out so now we're in color um, this is 1024 by 786 in 8 bit uh, this demo program always takes the whole screen and runs the Mandelbrot in that resolution so that's comparably small, slow to see. There's an LED, the red one, which is showing that there's data coming from the transputer to the system, which then goes over the bus and back to the nano displaying it. I'm not filming the whole calculation, which takes about 200 seconds. And as said, the problem here is that gem is just very slow in plotting. So for this final bit, I switched to the Emo console um, to show the internals of the physical transputer and the virtual transputers built into the Nano. So for this, I am loading the GEMDOS driver written by Andre. So this is now installed and can be normally called with normal system calls. And one of those is the RSpy tool, which is originally made by Mike Brustle, one of the leading transputer nerds, and that checks the transputer network for every device on the several links. And now you see that transputer 0 is a T425C, which is the virtual one running at 40 megahertz, which is uh, a clock rate never um, produced by Inmos back then. Um, after that, there's the physical T805, which is this one, and that is again um, between the second virtual T425. So this gives the opportunity to have. Uh, transputer programs run without even owning a physical transputer but still there's a, the possibility to do so and the internal transputers also have access to the video RAM and later on we will have demos showing that so that they can drive the video RAM at their full speed from internal RAM.